All right, so you guys requested me to do the third and final Monkey Man movie of the Transporter series. I'm surprised you guys kept going with it. I'm surprised. What's next? You guys gonna vote for the remake one too? Well, so you guys want me to review Transporter 3 from 2008. So we all know this is the weakest one out of the trilogy. And yeah, this movie could have been done a lot better. I mean, I don't hate it or anything. It's all right. You know, I like, the, I like some of the action scenes. But the real drag of it, we'll talk about that soon. But one of the things is that there's a difference about this movie is that one of the logos pop up for this movie is Lionsgate, the company that makes movies all the time. I'm like, Lionsgate? I don't remember Lionsgate making transporter movies. So I think it turns out that I couldn't really find information or about it, but I, I guess they lost a, some kind of disagreement between 20th Century Fox and the transporter movies, and somehow they move on to Lionsgate. Because I was reading right here, it's like, unlike its predecessors, Transport 3 was released by Lionsgate Films instead of 20th Century Fox in the United States. I find it be odd. I'm like, so they released two films from 20th Century Fox and released a Transport 3 for Lionsgate. Because, yeah, I was wondering about that. Because I was wondering about the whole, you know, the Blu-rays. I was wondering, well, why release a trilogy of all three movies? And that's the reason. Because this one was released from Lionsgate. And the other two were released on 20th Century Fox. That's why they never made, like, a trilogy of all three of them. Now I understand. Because I remember I was looking up on Amazon and eBay. I was looking up. I was like, why is there a trilogy of all three movies in one uh, Blu-ray case? Uh, that's the reason, I guess. And I'm also glad that they didn't put all three of them in one Blu-ray case because this one is not really that great, to be honest with you. I thought it'd be a lot better because before I watched this, I heard a lot of people say this movie wasn't that great. It's one of the weakest of the trilogy. I heard a lot of things about this before I started watching it. And I was very cautious about watching this movie to begin with because of everyone was saying this and that about it and it leads me to being cautious. But then again, a lot of people voted for this. They want me to do a, express my opinion on this film and blah, 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 blah. So let's, let's get into this. So like I said, this is published by... <laughs> published. This is produced by Lionsgate. Because I guess they had some disagreement. The uh, the, the writer, Luke Besson, had a disagreement with uh, 20th Century Fox. So that's why they went to Lionsgate. And they produced and did the Transport 3 film. So, this week here, 2008, it stars, once again, Jason Statham, and the Spectre guy comes back again, and totally new, pe new people. No no other big stars in here again, once again. Just Jason Statham. So, just like the first movie. So, this movie is basically... It all starts off where, I guess, I don't know, they're on this fucking ship. Not Statham, it's all these fucking people and this toxic waste or something like that. These two guys suck, suck on a boat because they're looking for beer or something like that. Some alcohol. They over one of the fucking, the, uh, the, one of the tanks, one of the oil tank things, or whatever you want to call it, inside the, uh, the ship. And it turns out it's toxic and, and burned and killed both of them. And the guys that dump them in the water to get rid of the motherfuckers. Then all of a sudden it cuts to, uh, what, what happens, uh, Frank Martin, the monkey man, and uh, an inspector were, uh, were fucking, uh, fishing, and it keeps cutting to this, uh, goofy guy named Malcolm was driving a car, he's driving pretty fast with this ginger looking lady, which I did mention here before in the first Transporter review, the first movie review of the Transporter 1, that I'm not really that crazy about this broad, and... She's better looking than the fucking chick in the second movie, I'll tell you that. That fucking ugly ass blonde lady. Oh god, she's she's hideous. This chick's a lot more better looking, I'll say. She's more decent looking. You know, I'm not really crazy about gingers though. You know what? No, no, no. I actually don't mind gingers. Scratch that, I don't mind gingers. But I'm not sure about her and her raccoon eyes, so I mean, like I said, I don't I don't think she's ugly. It's just that I don't know. So the reason why so the whole thing with Luke Besson and this lady, this actress lady, she wasn't an actress before. I read here in this trivia that uh, she, she used to be a, a hairdresser with, with no acting experience prior to this film. Was discovered by producer Luke Besson as he was walking down the street in New York 
best to come up to her and ask her to take some acting lessons and to come in for an audition. So that's why she's in this movie. She does okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna like shit on her or anything like that. She's not. She does okay. But the thing with Luke Bassett walking down the street and finds his hairdresser, it makes no sense. So he's just walking down the street in New York. He spots her at this this fucking hairdressing place. And he asks her to to come in and do auditions for a movie. I'm like, what the fuck was going on that day? He's just walking down the street and he just sees her and he just asks her to do a movie. Okay. That's uh pretty interesting, huh? But let's go back to the story, shall we? Let's go back to that. So, like I said, this Malcolm guy's getting chased. He has this ginger girl in the car with him. They got this wrist thing on their wrist that so we'll get to that soon. And they're driving through, they get chased by this guy shooting at them or something like that. Frank and uh Inspector fishing and then they're goofing around. Next thing they're back at Frank's house. Frank's just chilling there and all of a sudden this asshole Malcolm just drives through right through his fucking house. I'm like, what the fuck? This guy just comes out of nowhere and drives through Frank's house. He's like all bloody, he got shot, this and that. Frank's like he says that hey, he's gonna call the ambulance. And he's like Malcolm's like, Oh no, don't don't do that. Don't call the ambulance. So the ambulance comes, takes him away, and then the ginger girl wakes up and tells Frank that, oh, don't call the ambulance, that's not a good idea. Because we got this rest things on, and you leave the car for too far away. And if the person leaves, walks away for too long, away, way too far away from the car, he blows up and dies. That's the main part of the story. So, they have these wrist things on their wrists, and they're connected to the car. And you walk too far away from the car, you blow up and die. So that's like the main plot of the story. Then all of a sudden the hitchman comes out of nowhere and knocks out Frank. Frank wakes up in his fucking boxer briefs. In this weird room. He puts on his fucking suit and tie on because this, uh, the guy that is a control freak comes out and says, Oh yeah, you know, I know you love wearing suits and ties, so I let, let the suit out right there for you. Well, in a flashback, he was Frank was sitting down talking to one of the uh, boss's henchmen. Hedgeman's like, uh, th this guy don't take no for an answer. Y you're gonna have to do it regardless of what he says. And he, he gives he gives uh, the guy uh, some other guy's phone number, Malcolm. I said, here, take this guy's phone number, Malcolm. He can help you with it. And they're like, well, he still don't want to take no for an answer. So he gets in a fight with them in the place, Frank, in the flashback. So the first fight sequence is just the camera shakes too much, and it's hard to me to really focus and watch this because. It's too much camera shaking. I can't really focus on watching. They're going way too fast. The fight scenes there. It's a little too much. I'm like, oh come on. Well, what is this? Is this is this Jason Bourne or something like that? Well, this this is the, the year where Jason Bourne came out. You know those three movies, and everyone's like copying them and shit with the whole sh camera shaking bullshit. So the first first action sequence was pretty mid because it was just too much camera shaking shit. It's hard for me to watch it. So after all that happened, it was like, oh, thank God that, that scene was over. It, that's, that fight scene was like okay at best. It wasn't even that great of a fight scene. It's, it's not nothing to not compare with the the second movie. The second movie had like the best fight scenes. So then after that happened, uh, let's go back to the present day. So uh, now Frank has the uh, the wrist control thing on his on his hand. And Frank still says that to the uh, the boss guy. He t tells the main villain guy, he's like, I'm still not doing it. I'm still unavailable. Then the boss henchman goes, I told you, boss. I told you he's going to say that. The boss gets mad and shoots and kills the guy. And he's like, get me a smarter guy. It's not him. It's not retarded. Then he points a gun at Frank, point a gun at his head. You better change your goddamn mind. And Frank's like, you know what? Fuck it. On one condition, I'm listening. I use my own car deal so he gives frank his own car with the broad in there and frank's like oh look i do it alone the guy that was about to kill her he's like you know what wait wait wait, wait, wait. I, I'll, I'll do it with her i don't want i want that shit to happen so he decides to do it with the girl because he don't want that guy to kill her so so then uh fucking uh he tells him to do this uh the boss guy i say here's some money for food and money money yeah, here's some money for food and water or whatever. Now, go out there, do my mission. And Frank just drives off. 
Yeah, the main villain boss, he's a fucking big-ass control freak. He got these motherfuckers on a fucking wrist control bands and shit. You, you walk way too far away from your car too far away, you blow up and die or some shit like that. It's a pretty stupid plot. So, yeah. I don't know. This this main villain guy reminds me of Luke Besson. Because I think like in real life, like Luke Besson doesn't take no for an answer with, with women. And that's why that's why I end up in this movie. I definitely I guarantee it because in, in real life Luke Besson he got trouble for sexual harassment or sexual assault I think right he got accused of it or something oh wait this is even worse rape accusations by this actress from this movie that he uh, produced I think and then he had like more several other women including a former assistant who all wished to remain anonymous describe inappropriate sexual behavior by the director I told you. I told you that this 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 uh, main villain character in this movie is based off Luke Besson. He doesn't take no for an answer. He, when one of them says no to him, he still does it anyways. This character is basically based off the fucking director, Luke Besson. <laughs> oh shit, it's actually based off this motherfucker. That's why I just tried this movie, because it's based off of him. It makes so much sense now. The whole controlling thing. Fucking uh, does take no for an answer. This is Luke Besson. This main villain guy is Luke Besson. But anyways, uh, now Frank's in the car with the ginger girl, and he tries talking to her. She don't want to talk. This and that. Then he tries to introduce himself, and she don't want to introduce herself because she knows she's going to die or something like that. So I have the first guy. And, I don't know, then, he, uh, then she finally introduces herself. Then later on, I got these, uh, the, the Prime Minister guy, he's having a fight with fucking this crooked dude, the the main boss dude, and again, an argument with him about a, a signing a piece of paper or something like that, because some, uh, I don't know, some toxic waste situation, I don't know what's going on with that. I didn't really care about that whole part, I was just blowing my eyes out about that shit. I could, I could go read a Wikipedia about that if I wanted to. Nothing really special about that fucking shit. Alright, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. You know, whatever. Yeah. So, did they decide that? Let's see. Frank decides to drive to to meet one of his old buddies that's a mechanic that can, you know, know a lot about technology or something like that. He drives to go see him, and he asks him to figure out how to get rid of his wrists around both of their, uh, well, this, uh, this collar wrist thing. Like, we gotta figure out how to get rid of it. So he asks his fat friend to help him out. And then all of a sudden, these guys show up. Fucking the bad guy's henchmen show up. Tell him to get back on the road and start driving. And Frank tells him no. And this whole big fight scene happens. Now, this second sequence fight scene is a lot better than the first fight scene. The first fight scene wasn't that great. This one's a lot better. And it's like less of a camera shake. A little bit more or less of a camera shake and I really enjoy these fight scenes more than anything. And this is like the best part of the whole movie was this was this part. Then later on he fights this really big giant guy and like Frank's like, are you the smaller one? Smarter one? No, I'm the bigger one. And he has this big fight with him and uh, the big guy gets stuck in the ground and he started like beating, punching the shit out like he's a punching bag. Then he falls right through it after knocking his ass out. Then Frank just throws a rose in there in the, in the hole that the, the big guy's in. Like, knocked out into. Then, uh, the guy couldn't figure it out because he tried to, like, to get it out of the, uh, the car. He told Frank that if I pull it out, it goes kaboom. Frank's like, alright, whatever. So he gets back in the car and, uh, he tells, uh, the fat guy that, uh, well, what should I do with all these, guys, these knockout guys in my car? Well, not, not car. In, uh, in my place. Well, you, sh you should take take a day off and just re relax. So uh, Frank drives off with uh, with the girl to get out of there. Then later on, Frank wants to talk to the the main boss again, Johnson. He wants to talk to him again in person, and Johnson refuses to talk to him in person. So he makes a quote saying. In Donald Trump's word, you're fired. And all of a sudden, this guy jumps into the car and steals his car and the girl. It drives off. Frank had to get on a type of a fucking uh, 
a bicycle riding like a monkey, uh, chasing after the motherfucker. And then the girl wakes up. She gets mad. She wants the other guy, who's Frank. And she starts beating up the, the new guy. And then uh, Frank jumps through the window, kicks the guy out of the car, and drives off. And after that shit happened... Then the next scene, fucking the girl's hungry. She wants some food. They show up at the gas station. Frank got put gas in the car. She, the girl's hungry. He gets her 50 bucks or whatever overseas money is over there. He gives her money. She goes in to buy some food. You know, she didn't buy some food. She, she got high on some drugs or something like that. And she started uh, acting all goofy and shit. And she had to buy a bottle of vodka instead of buying food. Which she's supposed to do. She said she was hungry before. All of a sudden she wanted to get wasted. Then she couldn't go too far because of the wrist thing. It was going off. So she had to take a piss and shit on the floor in the store. Fucking gross. Well, I mean, Frank could have moved a little closer for her and she would have went to the bathroom. But Frank was putting gas in his car, so. I mean, she could have hold it in and wait. But whatever. Because these uh, henchmen shows up with guns and shit in the car. Who works for the minister. And they start shooting at the car. Frank's just driving. It was like uh, flying off with the girl in the car. And Frank asks, who are these people? She says, don't know, don't care. Because she's high as fuck. And she's wasted. Blah, 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 blah. Then uh, Frank gets away with from them, going through between these two trucks or something like that. Get away from them, and I think fucking Frank gets them off off a cliff, and they all blow up or something like that. All those the, the uh, Benzers guys blow up in the fucking thing. And then the, that Johnson guy, the bad guy, he ends up uh, talking to the Minister about well, you do that shit again, then it's, I'll, I'll kill your daughter or something, whatever. Yeah, that, that, she is. She's the daughter of the prime minister. So, next thing you know, they're out on, I guess, a mountain or something like that. Then all of a sudden, she decides to seduce Frank Martin, the monkey man, to have sex with her because she needs sex. She won't give him the, the car keys back to him. She says, "Strip monkey man, I want some fun. Go ooh ooh ah ah for me." So that happens, and that was like a long love scene, which I don't care about this shit. I don't care about these love scenes. I want some action, damn it. Not that action. If I want to sit like that, I go watch Brazzers or fucking Pornhub. I don't care about this shit. The fuck? I can't watch action movies, not porn. And like the, the bad guys try to call, and they want to pick up the phone because Frank's fucking this lady. I'm not going to lie, I would, I would fuck her too, but... Uh, we don't need all these scenes, man. I don't care about this love shit. So she finally tells him after, you know, banging her brains out like a monkey. He tells her, he she tells him that her dad's a prime minister and she, she was at this party, uh, you know, party on her mind, which that's what she did in the car. And all of a sudden, someone put a Bill Cosby uh, pill in her drink and knocks her out. And all of a sudden she wakes up in the car and this Malcolm guy was driving. She was saying, uh, he, was, he was a great driver when I was as great as you. She says that. You know, by the way, the atmosphere of this movie seems a lot different from the second one. A lot fucking different. It seems a lot more darker, a lot more gloomier looking. It just looks it looks a lot different in this movie. The way the way the way they are, the way how they I don't know. I don't know, I don't, know, I don't like the atmosphere of this movie. It's not the same like the first and the second movie did. The comedy's a lot different. I mean, there is some funny things about this movie, but not a lot of it is that really that funny, you know? It didn't have that same feeling they did like the second movie did. It they had like a lot of funny comedy in there. Here it's just they don't have it here. The comedy is just not there like they did the second movie did. It doesn't have that magic that like the second one did. Or the first one. You know? The third one don't have that magic. It's just not there. It's not in the atmosphere in this movie. It's just seen a lot more darker. Not like, you know, violence darker or anything like that. It's a lot more less chemistry type of shit. I mean, also, there's a different director. Luke Besson wrote something totally different. And this is produced by a different company, Lionsgate, instead of 20th Century Fox. There's a lot, there's a lot of different changes to Transporter 3. A lot of different changes. But anyways, let's go back to talk about this movie. Ugh. Real fucking drag of a movie. That's another thing about this movie. This movie's kind of like a long drag. 
It's a real fucking drag. A lot of boring scenes. Boring, useless sex scenes I don't care about. This is Frank Barton we're talking about. He don't fucking do shit like this. He don't go around banging ginger Ukrainian girls. So the minister agrees he'll sign the contract if he gets his daughter back. So <clears throat> Johnson's like, all right, uh, monkey man, I want you to come to this bridge up here. Just drive up here to the bridge. Then all of a sudden it's a setup and he gets stuck. And he gives them the girl and they takes the, uh, the wristband off of her wrist so she won't blow up anymore. And then uh, Frank decides, well, he's about to get shoot up by these motherfuckers. So Frank decides he jumps, he shoots, no, he, he drives the car off the fucking bridge into the water. <clears throat> and the guys just, they fall for it. Like, all right, the guy's dead. Let's drive off now. He's going to drown to death. So let's just drive off. And Frank calls Inspector to come get him. And one of uh, the Inspector boys knew where he's at. And they're only 10 minutes away. So they drove there. And then Frank was fine. He got some uh, some random guy to pull him out of the water with his horse, I guess. I'm like, what the fuck? And he's just sitting on the fucking on top of the trunk. Next thing you know, uh, he's not wearing his iconic suit anymore. Now he's wearing some fucking jacket. I'm like, that's not his... Like, why is he wearing a regular jacket? He's supposed to be wearing a suit and tie, not some regular jacket. That's another thing about this movie. He's supposed to be a transporter. He's supposed to be wearing a suit and tie, not some random ass jacket. It's no way he, it's no way Frank Martin of all people ran out of suits and ties. It wouldn't make no sense, does it? It doesn't make no sense. This movie is just not transporter. So it makes sense why he just all of a sudden wears some fucking hoodie. Well, it's not really a hoodie. It's some r regular fucking jacket. I'm like, this is not, this is not the transporter. This is not the real monkey man here. It's not the same monkey man from the first two movies. So Frank uh, drives his car out of the water and follows the train where you know the girl and the henchmen are on and the bad guy the main bad guy and Frank gets on the train with the car on top of the train and he fights with the bad guys in the train and whoops everyone's ass in there the fight the train fight is okay it's not, it's not like the fight scenes in the mechanics shop once again, another fight scene was just okay. What well, the worst fight scene was the first fight scene. The third one right here is just okay also, though. And he beats all of them up. And he tried to get a little bit more too close to the bad guy. But the bad guy is too far for him to get close to. Because his car is far away. And if he gets too close to the man, he'll blow up. So he decides, you know, fuck it. Let me go back outside and get the car real quick and drive a little closer. So he drives inside. Goes... He drives his car right inside the train. And he grabs the guy and starts beating him up. Then he grabs him, puts him, puts him on the car. Uh, grabs that, uh, that flash drive thing out of the, the bad guy's pocket. Puts in the, the wrist watch thing. Or the wrist band thing. To take the wrist thing off of Frank Martin's hand. Wrist, whatever. Puts it on the, the, the bad guy's wrist. Ties him to the car. And, and say, well, you're married to this thing. So enjoy it. So the car drives off out of the train. And the, the the bad guy gets off the, the the car and back on the train, and I'm surprised the bad guy didn't go start run run towards Frank with the bomb thing. I'm surprised he didn't start doing that. Which that yeah, I find that be weird. I don't know why he didn't try to do like some kind of suicide bomb thing, start running towards fucking Frank. But he didn't do that. He was just begging on his knees or something like that, like crying for help or something like that, and then he just blows up. I mean, that, that, could, that could be a lot better. He started charging at Frank with a bomb or something like that. But the damn go off that. Which is that, I, I find it fucking weird. It would be more awesome if he did that shit, wouldn't it be? But they didn't do it off that, so he just blows up. And then the Prime Minister guy rips up the contract into shreds. And these cops show out the boat and shoot up the, the boat and the bad guys on it, whatever. And then Frank and the Spectre and the girl are fishing. And talk about carrots and whatnot and food. Like did in the car with Frank. Which I don't give a shit with that scene eater. Ugh, what a pointless movie. This movie did not feel like a transporter. This feels like a totally different movie from Transporter. That's why Frank went from a different fucking jacket. Because it's not even a transporter. Could I say this movie is... Could I say this review is a rant? 
Yeah, like I said, this movie feels like a real drag. It's just had a lot of boring scenes. Uh, the, the comedy wasn't there like it did with the second movie and the first movie. Uh, the chick was kind of annoying. Was on the wasn't that annoying. Everything was just bland and boring here. It just did not feel like a transport movie. It feels like a totally different movie. I don't know what Luke Besson was thinking of. He showed you wrote a third movie. This is the best he could come up with. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't know where they were going with this movie. Uh, I don't know what to really say about it besides uh, it's a boring movie, really. Yeah, it's just stupid. It's all about fucking Jason Stabe's character. He has this fucking stupid wristband thing on, on his wrist. If he gets too far away from his car, he blows up. That's like the whole purpose of the fucking story. He's got to do this stupid mission for this guy. And I don't really care about the mission at all. Everything, this whole movie was just a big blur to me. It was like the first two movies which I actually care about the story and shit. This story, I just didn't really give a fuck. This story movie is like a fucking cash grab to be honest with you. Luke Besson just want a big fucking paycheck for it. You fucking want a sex scene. Because you know Luke Besson is a dirty slob just like Harvey Weinstein. That's why his character is is based off of him in this movie. Control freak, does take no for an answer. That's basically him. He's basically pulling a gun in the stadium's head and making him do this movie. This shitty piece of shit, a dog shit movie. Yeah, no, this is a rant. This movie, this review is a fucking rant. Fuck this movie. Fucking garbage shit. This is the best he come up with. A fucking a, a woman's the package. Because oh, uh, the prime minister owns me shit. Christ's sakes. Uh ay ay ay. Alright, so in the past I always look at the the one out of ten stars. But so this time look at a ten out of ten, nine out of ten, eight out of ten stars. See how these fucking crazy people think about this movie. Alright, 10 out of 10, best out of 3 of them. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would this guy think this is the best one out of all 3 of them? No, it's fucking it's not. Sexiest man alive, 10 out of 10. I don't know if this is a guy or a girl. If it's a guy, then it's, uh, uh, I think you got a house more. One of the best car movies ever made. Frank Martin is one of the best action heroes. What is so great about this boring of drag of a movie? Best action movie for, for the last three months. What? Great surprising movie. Transport evolved? How did it evolve? It, it more like devolved. Everything was incredibly awesome, but the chick totally ruined it. The chick totally ruined it, but you gave it 10 out of 10, though. Okay, then. Surprisingly, I liked it more than the other two. How is this movie better than the other two? Okay, look, here, here's his options he has right here. Well, his... He has nine right here. Nine reasons why he thinks this movie is better than the other two. One, Statham is still a badass. He's, he's a badass in every movie he's in. Statham delivers great non-CGI martial arts action scenes. Okay, that's number two. Three, the chase scenes were, are great as always. Four, a great scene was one Frank's car was stolen and he ran to get it back. What's so special about that? Five, main people... Many people probably hate Valentina, but I enjoy her character. She was just trying to smile and was flirting. I guess. I mean, I didn't hate her really either. Inspector Tarsconi gave the movie some great comic relief. Not really. The second one did more of that than the third one. He was more funny than the second one. The plot is solid. No, it was not. The acting was nice. It was okay. The script didn't seem too bad. It was terrible. Overall, I enjoy Transporter 3. I don't get this guy. By the way, I won't be watching Transport Refueled. I don't know if I want to either. But if you want me to watch it, I'll do it. I think that's enough of me reading this shit. This video will get too long. Uh, this movie sucks. This is this fucking monkey shit ass bullshit.